the manager found 26 players willing to dive for the shirt. It's like a boxing game. I'm not gonna let you punch me. I have to punch you first. He complete football, so it will never be in history someone like him. Mark, I'm coming for your clinching record. He was rapid, he was powerful. He scored four goals past me. That will definitely be the best save of my career. Hello, it's Emmy Martinez here, and this is Box to Box. I've got loads of boxes to open and I've got no clue what is inside. What would you like to be in the boxes? I don't know, there's something, an Argentinian steak or anything, anything cool in there. And what's the worst thing that could be in one of those boxes? Oh, uh, a clown, a snake, I don't know, anything. <laughs> the Golden Glove, eh? It was like a school trip, you know, when we go with you, when you go with your friends at school. We were 26 friends and we had a coach uh, leading us as well as a, as a friend. Really enjoyable time having my family there. It was nine, ten players as they debuted, including myself. It takes one or two games to really realize, uh, visualize what you're going through. It's not as easy as it looks, otherwise everyone would win the World Cup. And then how the games went on, we started enjoying a bit more in training, people laughing and we started to recreate what we've done in the Copa America. We, because we're living together, we always said that we're not the most talented national team because you see other national teams with better players in better clubs, but no one beat us in group. We are the best group by far in any nation. Now we know that because we are friends. And you know, when you go into a country, it's a lot of egos. A lot of players who play or oh, play for big club and you don't. And in, in the national team, we don't. We are the same. It was a, an unbelievable experience. I don't know if I'm going to play the next World Cup or not, but this one will be forever in, in my heart. So, did you prefer being a fan with your brother in Russia 2018 or being on the pitch and winning the World Cup? It's a really cool picture of my brother. He posted on social media, me and him, on the stands, obviously. He put himself the, up before the Saudi Arabia, himself, uh, on the pitch and saying like, you are achieving your dream, what you told me, and I'm achieving mine, being there, watching you play, you know? So it was a really, really cool picture that made me cry at the time, you know, before in the, in the World Cup. It's true, you know, I, I, I promised him that I was gonna be the number one for, for that, for this World Cup, and being the number one and winning it is, you know, uh, I can't win anything else, you know? How were the Argentina fans? They crazy, they they passion, they they, they love football, you know. Uh, something like a stake and football, you, you got to love it. Everyone loves the country, especially the last two, three years where we're winning things and we're unbeaten in 36 games. And the people have such a belief in us that we had a really good connection with them. And the manager found 26 players willing to die for their, for their shirts. And, and that's a, the, it's the hardest thing to do as a manager. Obviously, uh, for Argentina, reaching semi-final or final is not enough you got the pressure from the fans and from the from from the history to to achieve things rather than just be happy to qualify or just happy to qualify to the semi-finals once we qualify to the final it was a relief they always tell you the first achievement for a first world cup player is to play seven games after croatia we did it and then Messi said the day before the game, uh, it, it got to be this one, it got to be this one. Uh, we got a team to do it, so let, let's do it tomorrow. So you went to sleep thinking this, we visualize it. Can you talk to me about the Netherlands and that free kick that they pulled off? No, obviously when, when Holland scored, they were just, it was a shock. We were winning 2-0, really comfortable. And then all of the signings got two goals in 10 minutes. I think it was the 111th minute. The ref said a minute before, it was a throw in for Holland and then he carried on and he gave the foul for Holland, which I thought it was a foul for us because they pushed Paredes before. So I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna concentrate in the middle, I'm gonna protect this area and I trust the wall to do the job. But when they play short, I was like, why will they do that in the last kick of the game? So it surprised us all and then they got the reward. Obviously, you're known for being a penalty specialist even before the World Cup. As soon as that goal went in, did your mind instantly switch to penalty mode? When the shootout was about to start it's, it's a different it's a completely different game i said i need to keep a clean sheet in the 30 minutes of extra time to go to penalty so i never actually thought about it until obviously the 120 minutes were, were finished so i was a little bit disappointed in myself because i was i'm always hard on myself you know and even in games win or lose i'm always hard on myself i will look what i can do better but penalty shootouts are different the pressures and the players they have to walk 60 70 yards to take a pen in a world cup quarter final or final and it's me against the other goalkeeper 
goalkeeper. So that's the mini games I do. We in the massive pressure that we in. When you play 11 v 11 in a football match, a penalty shootout is another game. So that's when my personality comes. I like to talk. I'm a chatty guy. I always do that. I make final players when they they miss or they they, they sleep. That's me, you know. And obviously, I, I never insult anyone about their relations or whatever. I'm just trying to pull someone off in a moment where I need to win something for my country. So it's it's like a boxing game. I'm not gonna let you punch me. I have to punch you first. But if you see my first penalties with Van Dijk or Mpape, they scored and I didn't say anything to them before that. So it's once it's a player where they're not so confident to take it or I, I say the first pen, that's when the chaos, the chaos starts. And I need to put pressure on them because if they miss, we got 80% chances of winning it. So that's when the mental side of the game is, it comes. See what's inside. <laughs> it will definitely be the best save of my career. Obviously, I couldn't enjoy it at the moment because it was a quick counter attack and we nearly scored. And I just remember going on, on my knees saying, Oh my God, she scored. You know, but actually, I wasn't thinking about the save that I made. Nothing, not for one minute. I thought, Oh my God, this is going to be my best save in football history because we haven't won the World Cup. So after the World Cup, when you see the media, when you see the, the replay, I was like, Oh my God, like what I say, because it was just in front of the goal with the ball bouncing in the last minute of the World Cup. So no one will remember if we lost that final. But now having the, the first star and making that save in the last minute, people count it as a goal, you know. It's like me scoring a goal with that save. Now I'm seeing it back, obviously, after one or two months after the World Cup, it's, it just feels incredible. Is it true that you've got a tattoo of that save? Yeah, I got it. I got it here. Where exactly where I made it say. And then that's a phrase that my brother said to me when I left Argentina. He said to me that the passion, that the passion takes you to glory. For me, the World Cup was the glory as, as a footballer. So I put that phrase in Spanish in, underneath the, the World Cup. As a young goalkeeper, I heard that you had weakness of like diving. When I was young, sort of my boy's age, four or five years old, I was diving really good for my right and I couldn't dive on my left. So my dad would put a mattress on the left. I said, come on, dive 20 times to the left. And then I learned, so I was leaving because of my dad. You said uh, during an interview during the World Cup, a psychologist is really important to you. Can you expand on that? My psychology is a, is a big part of my, my process. Obviously, I started using him when I was on my lows, which is a wish I could start before. When I started working with my psychologist and my newborn baby was, was born, I said, I'm going to do only one more loan. And that's it. I promised myself that I'm going to give everything I got for that loan and then get a move and play regularly. And I did it. So I, I put that object in my head, but having that obsession and that, that psychology to help you on your lows and on your highs. I play a, a semi-final saving three penalties and I was on the highest of the highest from 800,000 followers to 2 million followers in one night. And then you need to, I need to calm down to play a final. That's when psychology helps you to always be focused on, on just that game, that game only. <laughs> Goat. Yeah, I'll go there. Yeah. Who's the goat? I think we all know in football that someone complete football and, uh, and it's Messi. He won everything for Barcelona, for PSG, he won many La Liga, many League One now, Caps, Champions League. But there was something missing in his career, which is it was a trophy for Argentina. The Copa America, he took that backpack in, on his back saying, I can't win anything for my country. He did it after 28 years. Then we went into the Finalissima against the Champions of Europe at Wembley. We done it again. And then it was what next? It was just a World Cup. I said, if I win a complete football, and we as a teammate, we thought, Imagine if he Messi done it. What else is for him? He got everything. Broke all the records, seven Ballon d'Ors. I'm not sure anyone in football will win seven Ballon d'Ors. After the World Cup, I'm like, he complete football. So it, it will never be in history someone like him, I think. It's a really cool picture of me and him, obviously hugging each other in the Copa America. Uh, and he told me that you deserve it. I know what you've been through. You know, he, he knew all my struggles and that. And then we beat Holland in the penalty shootout. And I remember Lautaro ran the other way that was. So everyone went to Lautaro because he's got the last pen, you know. I'm like, bloody hell. Someone comes to me, you know, I was just, I went flat on the floor, you know, I was, I didn't look at anyone, I went flat on the floor. And the first 
person I see next to me hugging me and said, I can't believe you done again, you save us again. It was uh, it was Leo, you know. He just needed you all those for all those finals, didn't he? I just needed him in in the way that he was playing, to be fair. You can see his personality as a true leader and you know, a true leader, he doesn't say much, he only says 30, 40 seconds uh, speech before each game and everyone is just quiet, you know. Whatever he says, we got, uh, before the final of the Copa America, he mentioned me, my daughter was born in London, so I couldn't come to England to see um, her birth. So he said to me, Amy, that didn't even have his daughter for 30 days. Uh, so let's do it, let's win the final for him. So it was little touches that he's got that he, he makes you defend him even more. What was it like facing him in training? Uh, a joy, I want to be the best. Uh, it, what better to train against the best? So I'm, I'm always trying to take five pens against me, you know, shooting, when do shooting drills and, and I, I try myself the best way possible to try and save balls against Messi. Because I, I always think when you save balls against the best players, he makes you a better goalkeeper. And, and he does, he makes you a better goalkeeper. <laughs> Ooh, cool scarf, innit? Obviously, I would be grateful all my life to this club. Obviously, it gave me the opportunity to play every single game in the Prem. Obviously, it's my decision to come here. I had the option to go abroad or different clubs in the Premier League. You know, in the, the, the size of the club in England, the way they finished the season before I arrived, which is the nearly relegated. For a goalkeeper with the confidence I had at that time, uh, I would really help them, you know, and it would help me to reach my dream, which is the World Cup and, and play for my country. The reception I had after winning the World Cup, being the first Aston Villa player to win it, it was magnificent. I was, I was proud of that moment to be part of this club to grow together because I had a really good bond with the fans. Um, I see a lot of kids with my shirt, you know, that makes me proud. Talk to me about the uh, atmosphere in the dressing room. It's a really good mix to be fair. We've got French players, we've got English players, we've got Spanish players, we've got Emmy. So when I came, it was only me and Doggy. Now we've got more South Americans, a lot of people speaking Spanish now because of the manager is Spanish. Now we've got really good South American bond with the Brazilians. Obviously we saw when we got three, four wins on the spin, the atmosphere was just great you know now we lost two games but no one actually is moaning or we fight with each other uh, so a really cool dressing room how influential has neil cutler been on your career now neil cutler for me was uh, was huge, helped me since day one, Aston Villa. Honestly, he, he convinced me to go there, he would text me every day to go there. I was really sad when, when he left, that's, that's football. I didn't like it, to be fair, because it, not, it wasn't just my goalie coach, it was my friend, because it not, normally, you know, when you play a professional sport, it's, it's all about profession, you know. Sometimes you make friends, sometimes it's just teammates. He was my friend, you know, and losing him, it was a, it was a big shock. He said to me, when before the World Cup, so if you win it, I want you to call me straight after the, the game. So when we play France, we, we won the World Cup, so we, after the celebration, I had a shower, so I, gra I grabbed my phone, so I ran him on FaceTime, so, um, and we still obviously talk to each other. So quite often. You've broken, you, you're the club record holder for clean sheets, I believe. How many more do you think you can get? Look, I, I always got targets. I got targets in my locker and Mark Bosnich got 63 clean sheets, 64 clean sheets. So that's that's a target that obviously I, I got four, more, four and a half more years in the club and I got 30, 31 clean sheets so in two and a half years. So I'm looking to, to break his record and be the, the goalie with most clean sheet in Villa history. Mark, I'm coming for your clean sheet record, so. Sorry, mate. <laughs> this is trick or treat. I've got two boxes here. One that I love, one that I don't like so much. Let's see which one I choose. Oh, that might be a dog. Mm. This one got something soft. I'm going for this one. Haha, <laughs> you see? Something that I love. I'll tell you, I got the right one. My wife cooks really well, but when the time comes for the meat, I'm the main man. Yeah, obviously I cook for the South Americans. Uh, I done, obviously my, my dad's birthday, I invite everyone in the club, so I, I was cooking for 20 or 30 people at home. Now when it comes to barbecue, I'm the, I'm the man. So at the World Cup, I hear that the Argentinian chef, he's got special talent. He's ridiculous, he's, he's just so good. I think they brought 
thousands and thousands of uh, Argentina steak goes in Qatar, it's hard to find it. Actually, I go early sometimes to, for him to teach me exactly the way he does it, because he, obviously I cook it and then obviously it's really good. But when he does it, it's just like you can cut it with a fork. Just please teach me, yeah? <laughs> World-class player, what can I say? Is he one of the toughest opponents you played against? Uh, yeah, for sure. He was rapid, he was, he was great, man. He was powerful and uh, he scored four goals past me. He's obviously with Messi at PSG and do you think he's got a lot to learn from Messi? Yeah, obviously, <clears throat> Messi the best ever player that played football, so everyone learns with Messi, not just him, even still Neymar, all the players at PSG, they, they will learn from him. and. Hopefully they win the Champions League this season. So the last time you probably had a Mbappe doll was the, the tour bus? No, nah, it was just, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of people, a lot of toys, a lot of things in, in the bus parade. Imagine there's six million people throwing things at you. So you're going to receive loads of things. And it, it was a lot of, uh, obviously, French players or Holland players. Or that's Argentina and the fans trying to show that it makes you laugh. And that was nothing more than that, just celebration. This was Box to Box with Emmy Martinez. Please make sure you like it or you make a comment about it. Thank you guys, see you next time.